Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video and today we've got some major breaking news that we are going to be breaking down, talking about, it's regarding Arrow and its spin-off that was planned because it is not happening. Green Arrow and the Canaries is officially not moving forward at the CW so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So yeah. Big news guys, we got the official announcement just now, like, you know, half an hour ago or something, that Green Arrow and the Canaries, the Arrow spin-off, is not happening on the CW. So, we're going to be reading through TV Lines article, I don't believe it originally came from them, but that is my source that I'm reading off of in this video. So, the article title is, Green Arrow and the Canaries spin-off, not moving forward at the CW. So, let's break this down and go through everything that we know that went down with this cancellation, or more so, not picking up, I guess. So, the Canaries' wings have been clipped nearly a full year after Arrow, with its penultimate episode, aired the backdoor pilot for a spin-off. That was to be titled Green Arrow and the Canaries. TV Line has learned that the CW is not moving forward with the offshoot. The Hundreds prequel spin-off meanwhile is said to be still under consideration. Starring Catherine McNamara, Katie Cassidy and Juliana Harkavy, Arrow's planted spin-off pilot on January 21st, 2020 drew in 890,000 viewers. A season high accepting that the season's crossover and a 0.3 rating, which turned out to be a tenth over what the Arrow series finale itself scored. The 2040 set episode earned an average TV line reader grade of B, with 66% saying that they would absolutely tune in if it got ordered to series. So that's just a little bit of statistics for their own site and basically proving that, yeah, there was interest in this show because, you know, a lot of people who follow the shows read TV line. And so, they continue in that planted pilot, Laurel Lance arrived in the year 2040 to recruit the fellow Canary, Diana Drake, and new Green Arrow, Mia Smoke, to fend off a threat to the timeline, one which would bring crime back to the otherwise serene Star City. But secretly, Laurel's mission also involved helping keeping Mia from facilitating her city's ruin as foretold by future headlines. So that was kind of what happened in the pilot and you know we're gonna go back to what they say in TV Lines article in just a minute but I just wanted to stop here and give you my full thoughts on this. I was looking forward to the series especially because it is an Arrow spin-off and you do have characters like Diana Drake and Laurel Lance. I think that was the most intriguing part of it. Yes I thought Mia Smoke was pretty good, thought she was pretty good as the Green Arrow as well. I liked her in Arrow, but she wasn't as good as Dinah or as Laurel. And I think that was everyone's main interest in this new show, you know, that potentially could have happened was, you know, those original Arrow characters. Well, Dinah came in a bit later, but still came before Mia. So I think that was mainly the main consensus that, yeah, we want to see this because it's an Arrow spin-off and it would be cool. Also, I really like the title. I thought Green Arrow and the Canaries is a very good title. And I kind of thought that they would pick it up considering that Arrow is off the air now. It doesn't air any new episodes because it ended. And this is an Arrow spin-off. Arrow starts it all. I would have thought considering it's the Arrowverse they want to continue the Arrow legacy somehow. But it seems like they want to step away and go in a different direction from the original kind of series. So yeah, let's continue on with this article. So Green Arrow and the Canaries would have, among other things, explained how the Diana of 2020 wound up in the future, seeing as she was last seen speeding off on her motorcycle to fight crime in Metropolis. Arrowverse executive producer Mark Guggenheim told TV Line that that scene from Arrow's finale does jibe with what we saw in the spin-off pilot. Given that the backstory would have worked out for Dinah, that we haven't revealed to you guys yet. That's what he said as regards to the Diana situation. And then he goes on to say, she doesn't get on that motorcycle and immediately end up in the future, he added. And so, will any of the questions raised by the Planted Pilot or Arrow series finale, which aired the week after, now ever be answered? To name another mystery, raised in Arrow's final two episodes who kidnapped Mia's 
brother William at the end of the spin-off pilot and why didn't Mia seem too concerned about his absence when Sarah time traveled to 2040 to fetch her for Oliver's funeral. So with what they did in the backdoor pilot there is a lot of burning questions that are left and Guggenheim addressed that saying there are burning questions whilst doing some sort of interview during spring 2020, so during the last lockdown. And so he said, certainly the backdoor pilot ended with the cliffhanger of William's abduction. And I do think we owe answers to a lot of moments and questions. And certainly I think the main thing, apart from the disappointment of there not being an Arrow spin-off happening anymore, is definitely the questions that that, you know, backdoor pilot left because William got kidnapped and I think that was one of the biggest things. And then also all the other explanations because, you know, the Arrowverse continues even with the show not being picked up and, you know, will they answer any of these questions sometime in the future? Potentially they might go back to it at some point if some of these Arrow characters show up. And I think there is definite precipice for them maybe showing up, like especially Laurel, because she's been such a big character and I guess they would be open to bringing her back at some point. Considering that they're bringing back Diggle this season on literally all of the other Arrowverse shows that are still running right now. And so, continuing on from this, this is what the TV Line article says, If Green Arrow and the Canaries didn't get a order to series, Guggenheim said at the time, My instinct would be to answer those questions in the form of, like, a comic book tie-in, which is not to say that it can be done on other shows. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. I think there is a chance that they may answer some of those questions that was up in the air. However, they can do a comic book tie-in. But in regards to Mark Guggenheim, I believe he's not connected to the Arrowverse anymore. He's running some of the stuff at HBO Max, especially the Green Lantern show, and he's got a few other shows going on right now. So I think he's not going to do it, but maybe at some point they're going to address it in some of the other Arrowverse shows, potentially. Maybe when Diggle shows up, that could be a chance to bring it back. And so let's continue with this article. The trick was with resolving such mysteries elsewhere in the Arrowverse is that, and I quote, when you're dealing with another time period, the only show that could handle that or really deal with those questions is Legends, he noted. But even that is a bit tricky in terms of business since the tonal mashup of Legends and Canaries is very different. However, I disagree with Mark Guggenheim here. The Flash deals with time travel. They could totally deal with that as well. Legends, I would say, is more unlikely because of that tonal mix-up with what Arrow would have been, so like, why would they even care on the show, really? And so, let's move on, so, I look at these things as quality problems, Guggenheim concluded. I love the fact that we now have a universe of shows that allows us to speak to ourselves and ask these questions and explore these different things and answer questions from different shows, but we also have comic books as an outlet as well. So. Pretty much, you know, what he's saying right there is don't lose hope if you want to see the conclusion to these stories because there's always a chance considering you have all of these shows that are connected and you have comic book tie-ins that they can get answered. So don't worry about that guys if you are worried because you really wanted to get the answer to what happened in that backdoor pilot episode and you wanted to see the show. And I mean, it's a big shame I was looking forward to the show, and especially, like I said, because it's an Arrow spin-off. I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed, but it doesn't come as a big shock, considering that they were announcing all of these new spin-offs that were getting, you know, orders for pilots, and obviously not all of them will probably go through. However, there is a chance that they will go through, and there was a chance with Green Arrow and the Canaries that it would go through, but it just so happened that they didn't want to go ahead with it. And I'm not going to hold the CW to that. But anyway, so they continue with the Canary Silence. The Arrowverse moving forward includes its normal shows, and then it's adding in the new spin-offs like Painkiller, Wonder Girl, and everything. And then you have Superman Lois, which is premiering February 23rd. So no worries there. We're not going to be losing out on any shows, apart from obviously this one specific story. Apart from that, we're going to get a bunch of new shows that are coming soon. We talked about that. We got the Painkiller spinoff. We got that Naomi show coming from Ava DuVernay. And then also, I think the big one is the Wonder Girl spinoff that I'm really, really excited about. So, yeah, there is an abundance of stuff still coming. And it's a shame that we're not going to get season one of this. And it's not going to be like a proper show. We only will have that backdoor pilot. It's a shame, but 
oh well, let's move forward and maybe there'll be another Arrowverse or Arrow spin-off sometime in the future and maybe and hopefully we will see Laurel and Diana and maybe Mia at some point in the future in one of these upcoming crossovers. So thank you guys so much for watching, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and remember, and I just announced this on my community tab right now, that we will be running reviews for shows that we don't review regularly. If you are a member of the DC TV show, to become a member of the channel all you have to do is click the join button next to the subscribe button and your contributions will be greatly appreciated and you guys can get some exclusive videos, exclusive reviews that you will not get on the channel, like maybe WandaVision I think, after the first couple of episodes. And we'll see how Batwoman goes, but we are planning to release Batwoman reviews as they come out for now, whilst the other shows aren't on, and we'll see what you guys are interested in. But yeah, become a member, you guys will get exclusive videos, that is a new thing, I'm going to be talking about it a bunch in the near future. But all you have to do is click the join button if you want to become a member. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.